Hello everyone and welcome to this video on using PySpice to simulate the natural and step response of first order RC circuits. PySpice enables efficient description of a circuit using a netlist and it uses ng-spice as the backend simulator. If you are not familiar with PySpice, I recommend you to watch the introduction to PySpice video available in this channel. A link is also provided at the end of this video. In this video, I will explain the correct way to set up RC natural and step response circuits in PySpice. Recall that an RC circuit is a circuit consisting of only independent sources, resistors, and a single capacitor. Under natural response, there is a sudden disconnection of DC sources and under step response, there is a sudden application of a DC source. If we look at the circuit after switching takes place, then under natural response, there will be no DC source in the circuit after switching takes place. For a step response, there will be a DC source in the circuit after switching takes place. Let us consider a natural response example first. This solution is taken from another video in this channel. In this given circuit, the switch is in position A for a very long time. The charging time constant is 5 milliseconds. Thus, it takes at least 25 milliseconds for the capacitor to fully charge to 100 volts. After switching occurs, the discharging time constant is 40 milliseconds. Thus, for this transient simulation, we can select step time as 1 microsecond. We can set the switching time to any time greater than 25 milliseconds, say 50 milliseconds, and we can set the final simulation time to 250 milliseconds. In preparation for writing the PySpice netlist, let us label the components and nodes as shown here. We will model the single pole double throw switch using two single pole single throw switches as shown. This first switch will be initially closed and then open at switching time T0. The second switch will be initially open and then close at switching time T0. These two single pole single throw switches will be controlled using pulse voltage sources as shown. Let's discuss this in more detail. This is showing you the netlist commands to describe the circuit connections. For instance, the voltage source labeled 1 is connected between nodes 1 and ground and has a value 100 volts. The first node is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and the second node is connected to the negative terminal of this voltage source. Similarly, resistor R1 is connected between nodes 1 and A and has a value of 10 kilo ohm. The two single pole single throw switches are here. The first switch is labeled 1. It is connected between nodes A and output. The controlling voltage is coming from nodes position A and circuit ground. We also need to specify the switch model which is done as shown here. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this netlist in more detail. Let us discuss the switch modeling as the next step. The switch model is shown here. This is the label. SW means that we are using the default switch model. However, we are changing the on and off resistance to 1 milliohm and 1 gigaohm to mimic an ideal switch. 
we use a pulse voltage source to set up the controlling voltages. This pulse voltage source is connected between nodes position A and ground. Since this switch is initially closed, we set the initial value of this pulse voltage source, which is controlling this switch, to be 1 and the pulse value as minus 1. This pulse value kicks in after the delay time to turn the switch to off. For the pulse voltage source, we also need to define the pulse width and period and these are set equal to the final time as shown here. The pulse voltage source also has time rise and time fall parameters. If not defined as here, then the values of these parameters defaults to the step time, which is one microsecond. If you are interested, more details about the parameters is available in the ng-spice user manual. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this in more detail. In RC circuits, we are primarily interested in the voltage across the capacitor. This can be plotted by plotting the voltage at the node labeled output as shown here. We can also plot the voltage at any node. For instance, if we are interested in the voltage across resistor R4, we can plot the voltage at node 2 as shown here. Since we have all the node voltages at our disposal, we can use Ohm's law to plot the circuit currents. For instance, in order to plot this current through R1 in this direction, we can use Ohm's law and plot it as the voltage at node 1 minus node voltage at node A divided by the resistance. Circuit dot R1 dot resistance allows us to access the resistance value defined in the circuit automatically. The current through the capacitor after switching is the same as the current through resistor R2 since these two components are in series. Thus we can apply Ohm's law to resistor R2 to get the current through the capacitor and this current can be obtained using Ohm's law as voltage at node B minus voltage at node 2 divided by the value of resistor R2 as shown here. The final important caveat is how to set the initial condition properly. Initially, the voltage across the capacitor is zero. This initial condition should ideally be specified as part of the capacitor netlist command here. However, at present, this feature does not work properly. Instead, we need to define the initial condition explicitly as shown here. So here we are setting the initial voltage at the output node, which is the voltage across the capacitor, to be zero. This statement then invokes the initial condition in the transient simulation. This is the complete Python code to simulate this circuit. This code is available in the video description. We have some standard declarations at the top. In addition, I am using the math and the engineering notation packages. The netlist commands are here. These have already been discussed in the video. If desired, we can leverage the calculation power of Python to do theoretical calculations side by side with the simulations. For instance, here we are calculating the time constant after switching takes place and we're using the engineering notation package to display its value. Finally, the plotting commands are shown here. 
when I run this module, module, we get the results for the voltages and the currents. Let's look at the voltages first. So the capacitor is initially uncharged and then it charges to 100 volts and after switching takes place the voltage across the capacitor then exponentially decreases to zero. This line is showing the voltage across the resistor R4. This voltage is zero before switching occurs and only exists after switching takes place. Similarly, we can look at the currents in the circuit. The theoretical value of the time constant is also displayed in the Python shell. Let us now move to the step response example. This solution is taken from another video in this channel. For this circuit, since charging requires 18.75 milliseconds, we can set the switching to take place at 20 milliseconds and set the final time as shown. Similar to before, we label the node voltages and the circuit components and we use two single pole single throw switches to model the single pole double throw switch and these switches are controlled using the pulse voltage sources. These are the netlist commands to describe this circuit in PySpice. Please pause the video now if you wish to study these in more detail. These are the netlist commands to control and activate the switches. Please pause the video now if you wish to study them in more detail. This is the complete Python code to simulate the step response circuit. This code is also available in the video description. We have standard declarations at the top, the circuit netlist, and these are the commands for the theoretical calculations and plotting. So here also we are calculating the time constant after switching takes place. For plotting, we are plotting the pulse voltage sources. We are plotting the voltage across the capacitor, which is the voltage at the node labeled output. In order to plot the current through the capacitor, we exploit the fact that the capacitor is in series with resistance R3. Thus, we can apply Ohm's law to resistance R3 to get the current through the capacitor after switching takes place. When I run this module, we get the solution for the voltage and the current. So the voltage across the capacitor is initially zero. The capacitor charges to 30 volts. And then once switching takes place and the second source kicks in, it eventually charges the capacitor to minus 60 volts. And this is the plot of the current through the capacitor after switching has taken place. In conclusion, PySpice provides an efficient and powerful simulation environment for natural and step response of RC circuits. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that this video convinces you to adopt Python for your circuit simulation projects.